Welcome to Travel Bubble and to Varanasi, one of the oldest cities in India. In this episode, we're going to be exploring the world famous city alongside the Ghats, seeing the ceremonies and trying to learn a little bit about the history and the culture of this place. Good morning, it's our first proper day here in Varanasi. We were here last night wandering along the Ghats to see the ceremonies that happen along down there. What is that? It's a funny bird. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna explore the Ghats properly today and have a little wander around the city. It's really easy to just walk down to the Ghats and walk along and see daily life. And each of the Ghats has different things about it. Yeah, and it feels really safe here as well. Everyone's quite chilled. It's got almost like a, a beachside feel down there near the river which I wasn't expecting but yeah we're gonna enjoy it today learn a little bit more about the Gats and then get to a part of the Gats where they do the burning and apparently there's a special ceremony going on today when they throw the ash at each other. Legend has it that a goddess called Durga um, slayed some demons here using a dagger and that dagger created some sort of crater which meant that like a stream formed from somewhere that way to the river. I'm not sure if it's this little stream bit here. Uh, probably because it's hot, it's dried out. Who knows? But this bit is actually quite sandy. Uh, you can get boats here to do boat trips up and down the river. I think you can do that pretty much at any gap, anywhere. Uh, this one's quite sandy, whereas the other's a bit more paved. Uh, so you've got a lot of people chilling out here, uh, families. So it's quite nice to just come and relax. Walking along the Ghat, you can see like daily life going on. There's people like washing their clothes, there's people bathing in the Ghat. And yesterday evening when we walked up, there were some kids just doing like uh, somersaults and jumping into some straw that had been laid. Um, they've now put some bamboo across and they're trapping tourists as you go past and making you pay to get through the bamboo. So we have to do kind of like- Just yeah, walk around them. Yeah, walk around or limbo under their bamboo and then you'll get past. But yeah, quite an ingenious way to try and get some money. Yeah, it's, you don't have to pay, nothing is uh, payable on the gaps you can walk along them for free no problem so if anyone says this charging money it's pretty much nonsense Each gat is an absolute hive of activity. There are so many different things going on. Some of them are kind of quite quiet. Some of them people are bathing. Some of them you can get boats from. Um, the one we were at last night seems to be the busiest in the daytime. Lots of little market bits, um, massages, all those sorts of things. It was absolutely heaving there. And then just one gat later is where they seem to be making and fixing a lot of the boats. So very, very different, just a few steps down the line. So definitely be walking all the way up and down here. At the Manakanika Gap, the age-old tradition is to play holly with the ash of the priors. According to local tradition, it is to celebrate death and the hope of achieving moksha, which is to transcend the death and rebirth cycle to reach the divine self. It is also thought that Shiva celebrates holly here at the temple.
special day today. It is one of the celebrations as part of Holly, but it's with a difference. Instead of throwing all the colour and the paint, they're throwing ash. I'm not sure if it's actual human remains, but they are bringing bodies down to the gats here. They're burning them, and it's a big celebration as part of the start of Holly. There was some powder paint as well. People getting in there, throwing the ash around. It was absolutely crazy, and the wind just picking it up and getting it. So it's all over our bodies, camera, everything. We have washed all the ash out of our hair, we've changed clothes, we're now smelling acceptable and we are off to do a cooking class. Ever since we arrived in India we've wanted to do one, we've loved the food here, especially Mali Kofta, Palak Paneer, Kandai Paneer, anything Paneer really. Um, I think we're going to learn one dish, maybe how to make some bread, um, a dessert and possibly a drink as well. So I'm really glad we're doing it even though we've really got about one day left on our trip. We found the cooking class through Sparrow Cafe in Varanasi. It is a cafe dedicated to helping vulnerable women from lower caste families. The owner invited us to her home to learn some of the methods used in Indian cooking. We started with learning about the key spices and how different combinations work to flavour and change simple dishes. We got fully involved in all the preparation of a paneer curry. We made a raita side dish with onion, beetroot and tomato and for extra flavour tempered some cumin to mix in. Whilst the curry was simmering, we got stuck into making roti and parantha, both made from flour but cooked differently. To finish the roti, we had to flip it onto the naked flame of the hob and wait for it to puff up before turning to crisp on the other side. To finish the parantha, we had to introduce oil into the dough, flatten and crisp. The cumin rice was done in minutes in a pressure cooker and the spice mixed in after tempering on the hob for a few seconds. We were there for hours, learning and chatting about life and Indian culture whilst enjoying the meal we had made. We woke up early the next morning for a sunrise boat trip on the river Ganges. We've just wandered down some of the ghats to our morning boat ride. We're on the boat now and we're about to head out onto the river Ganges to see the sunrise. The river Ganges is sacred to Hindu people. Flowing through India, this river has been significant in mythology, poetry, literature, life and death. Along the river, at the ghats, we saw yoga, people bathing, washing clothes and entering temples for morning prayer. It was a very peaceful and beautiful start to the day. You can see why it's such a holy place and why so many people come here from India and afar. To worship, to learn, to experience an integral part of people's lives. It's our last day in uh, Varanasi today. We're heading on the train tonight. Uh, we've just been taking the time to chill a little bit. We've been at this cafe here. I don't know if you can see. Having some amazing French like pastries. We had like a chocolate tour and a lemon pie as well. So I think we're going to come back here for dinner as well. But we need to check out a lassie shop. Uh, Blue Lassie has been recommended to us. So we're going to wander through the streets, maybe have a look at the markets and buy a few souvenirs as well as we are leaving India very soon and try this famous lassie. it through the crazy markets and the crazy streets it's so much more hectic than walking along the ghats um, we definitely got a little bit lost but now we're gonna get to that lassie shop and um, they serve lots of different flavors lots of different types so hopefully uh, we'll be able to find something that's really good and enjoy the remaining time we have here So 
it. We got our lassi. It was really nice. I had a mango coconut one. It was absolutely delicious. It was quite interesting sitting there as it was one of the main roads that leads down to the burning gap. So we saw like three bodies going past, which is quite a strange thing to watch as you're having a lassi. The lassi shop had been open for 85 years. So it was such a long time. And it had so many choices, like 50 choices of lassi. So definitely go check it out. It's an interesting, it's an interesting place to sit. And it has really delicious, tasty lassi. We made our way down to the Gats. It was a little bit difficult. We got lost, but then we saw a body being taken down to the Burning Gats, so we knew it was going to be heading down to the river. So we just followed that and made our way down. Um, it might be a bit of a scary thing for some people, um, the idea of the cremations being in the open by the river, but it's actually really beautiful. And I think a lot of people here, well, obviously it's, it's natural to them. So it just feels natural to us as well while we're here. You can see down by the Gats where they have the big wood stores. Um, they all have like the same colored ribbons as well they kind of put into the river or splash with the water and then these ribbons are taken off and then they're put onto the pyre just like in the white um, like sheets I guess that's what it is and then obviously that is them passed through to uh, what they believe to be their higher life or their next life and we're gonna end our time here in Varanasi seeing the evening celebration at the main gat I'll put the name here because I have no idea how you say it um, it's an evening IRT we saw a small version of it in Pushkar and we kind of saw it the first night that we got here as well but this evening we're gonna try and see it see it properly maybe try and see it from the river um, and that'll be the last thing that we're doing in Varanasi and probably in India. Before our final evening we had to visit the Adhar Adhar cafe for a meal and view over the river. There were lots of people already waiting for the sun to set and the RT to begin. Chairs are laid out free of charge to sit on, or you can stand by the sides and down by the river. We watched the priests prepare the lamps, flowers and incense, whilst crowds gathered and the sun went down. Before the main ritual began, priests would chant and give flower offerings to the river. The bells were continually rung as the priests used incense and lamps to circle round and chants to praise the river. The legend is that fire is offered as a link between this world and the spirit world. People come to experience this ceremony from all over India to find peace and be blessed by Mother Ganga, the river. Excuse the green light, we've just finished watching our final arty here. Oh, blue light now. Um, it's so magical. Uh, we managed to go down onto the water. If you stand on the actual docks, you don't have to pay anything. Uh, if you want to sit in a boat, you can pay 50 rupees, so not too bad, about 50p. But it was so beautiful and it's the perfect end to our time here in Varanasi and in India. We've absolutely loved it here. It's a really great place to come and just experience life. There's 
lots you can do. There's lots where you can just do a lot of nothing and chilling, walking up and down the gats and exploring. It's been really, really great as our final stop here. If you missed anything else, go back and check our other videos. We were in Rajasthan and Delhi as well. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And we'll have one more for you from India 